Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. It seems there's been some confusion as to what lenses will mount and couple to the metering systems of Nikon manual focus cameras. In this video, I hope to clear this confusion up. I will be talking about Nikon film cameras, manual focus film cameras, made between 1959 and 2006. It starts with the Nikon F and ends with the Nikon FM3A. Okay, we're going to start with Nikon cameras with no meter. So let's remove these cameras with the meter. Okay, and here we have a Nikon F dating back to 1959. When originally introduced, it just had a plain prism finder. There is no meter built in to the body of a Nikon F. You could add a meter using a photomic prism head, which had the meter in the finder. Nikon F took not just this plain prism finder, also took a waist level finder, a sport finder, a high magnification finder, all of course had no meter. Same thing for the Nikon F2. Now the one I'm showing you here is a Nikon F2 photomic. However, the F2 also only had the meter in the meter finder, in the photomic finder. And then there was one other Nikon that had no meter, and that was the Nikromat FS. The Nikromat FS, this is a Nikromat FTM, but it looks similar. The Nikromat FS from around 1965. Okay, so those are really the only three Nikon cameras that had no meter. So what lenses fit those cameras? One other thing I might want to add, the Nikon F and the F2 also had mirror lockup. The, the Nikromat FS did not. And why does that matter? Because several lenses made by Nikon uh, probably most notably the 21 millimeter F4 from 1959 required mirror lockup because the rear element of the lens mounted right into the mirror box and you had to use a separate finder. Also several fisheye lenses. Okay, so what lenses can we mount on an F, a Nikromat FS, or a Nikon F2? with no meter prism. We can mount just about any F mount lens. The one you see here, this is a 58 millimeter, actually it's marked 5.8 centimeter, 1.4. It was introduced with the original F in 1959. It mounts perfectly on an Icon F. Now, in 1977, Nikon introduced AI lenses. AI were automatic indexing lenses. So let's grab one here. Let's grab an AI lens. Here is a 50 millimeter 1.4, A actually AIS lens. And it mounts fine on the Nikon F. AI and AIS are very, very similar. Um, there's only difference between an AI and an AIS is that the AIS lens will work with the program mode of a Nikon FA. It's really not a big deal. You really don't need to, uh, unless you have an FA and want to use program mode, you can work perfectly with an AI or an AIS lens. We'll get more into that later. So again, an AI or AIS lens will mount on an Icon F. What else will mount on an Icon F? A autofocus lens. This is a 35 to 70, 2.8. It will mount on an Icon F. Again, on an Icon F with no meter, without the meter head. The only AF lenses, however, that will work on the Icon F will be ones with an aperture ring. 
So you must be able to set the aperture on the lens. Some of the newer Nikon autofocus lenses did not have an aperture ring. For example, this 24 to 120 autofocus, but it's called a G lens, meaning it has no aperture. You can mount this lens on the F, as you can see, and again, you could also mount it on an F2 or even a Nikermat FS. However, it's really useless because you cannot set the aperture. It would be, if you did take a picture with it, the aperture would be set at its minimum. Okay. Also some third-party lenses. Most third-party F-mount lenses will mount. Here's a Zeiss lens. Mounts perfectly. And it has an aperture ring. Must have an aperture ring. Okay, now I have a, um, one of the early Nikon autofocus lenses mounted on this Nikon F now. And of course you can see the aperture ring, okay? Uh, one thing to note is, of course, these lenses won't autofocus on a Nikon manual focus camera. You would have to focus manually, okay? So that's it for the Nikon cameras without a meter. Eventually, Nikon introduced photomic meter finders for the Nikon F. This was the first one, just called the photomic. There was also a photomic T, a photomic TN, and the final one was a photomic FTN. In order to couple to the meter, those lenses required a coupling prong. Some people refer to them as rabbit ears. Uh, let me just give you another example of one. Let's take this, one of the original F-mount lenses, the uh, 58 millimeter, okay? And this coupled to a pin on the finder. Okay, on this FTN, once you mounted it, you set it to 5.6, mounted it, twisted it to the minimum aperture, twisted it to the maximum aperture, and then there's a window in the front of the finder that indicated that. Okay, so that is how they coupled to the meter. And this last Nikon FTN meter finder was introduced in late 68, early 69 and uh, it was used throughout the rest of the production of the F, which ended in, I believe, late 73. They were sold new until into, the, into 74. So they require, in order to couple to the meter, they require this pin. However, if you had, if you did want to mount one of these autofocus lenses, you can do it, but there's no meter coupling. And what you would have to do in that case is just use stop-down metering. In order to use stop-down metering, you turn on the meter. When you take your meter reading, you press in the depth of field button on the front of the camera, adjust your exposure, adjust your aperture or shutter speed to give you proper, exp proper exposure, release the de depth of field button, and take your picture. So you can use a lot of these lenses on even one of the Nikons with the meter. The Nikon, the Nikromat worked exactly the same way, okay? You can mount one of these autofocus lenses. Let's just throw one on here on the Nikromat. There we go. All right, we'll take this autofocus lens off the FTN, the Nikon FTN, and mount it on the Nikromat. And it mounts perfectly. Again, you have no meter coupling. There's nothing attached to this pin which tells the camera what the aperture is set for, so you must use stop-down metering. But it works fine. That also holds true for the Nikon F2. When the Nikon F2 was introduced in 1971, it also came with a, we had the availability of a meter finder this was known as the DP-1. 
Uh, there were several meter finders for the Nikon F2. Finally, in 1977, with a new way of indexing the lens to the meter. On the original Photomic, where the same as on a Nikon FTN, you set the lens to 5.6, you mounted it, twisted it to its minimum aperture, then to its maximum aperture. There's a little window on the front that indicates the maximum aperture. In this case, it's 2.8. But also, you could use one of these lenses without a coupling prong. And well, here, let's mount this one. This is a 60 millimeter 2.8 autofocus lens. It will mount. And mounts fine. It's just not coupled to the meter. So you have manual focusing. Again, to use this, turn on the meter. Hold in the depth of field preview lever. The lens stops down to the aperture that is set. You adjust your exposure, release it, take the picture. OK. There was a big change in 1977. Nikon introduced AI lenses and AI cameras. It's known as an F2A and the finder was the DP-11. Same as the Nikon Photomic Finder for the F2, except you'll notice that window is gone and you have a little A here on the front. These cameras, the A cameras that took AI lenses, so it would be the Nikon F2A, there was a Nikon F2AS, which I'll show you in a minute, there was also the Nikromat FT3, which required these lenses, these AI lenses. Okay, here's one here. This is a Nikon FT3. Also, the Nikon EL. The Nikon EL was basically a Nikromat EL that had AI indexing. Okay, you see there is no, on any of these cameras, you do not see that pin that was in the finder of the Nikromat FTN. What you had was a lever here, this little lever meshed with, let me find an AI lens, here we go. It meshed, it meshed with a ridge, which you could see right here. This ridge, when you mount a lens, this ridge connected the follower lever on, on the AI bodies, and it indicated to the, to the meter what the aperture was. Okay, no longer did you have to twist it to the minimum and twist it to the maximum aperture. They, so AI stood for automatic indexing. You just basically mounted the lens. It didn't matter what aperture it was set for. We were with the FTN. It had to be set to 5.6 so that the coupling prong mated with the coupling pin. No longer did you have to do that. But there's one big caveat here. Okay, there's one real important thing to keep in mind when using AI cameras. You cannot mount a pre-AI lens. You cannot mount those lenses manufactured before 1977 because they will damage this follower here. What Nikon did when they introduced those lenses and cameras in 1977, they offered an update for the older lenses. And it was very inexpensive at the time. I believe it was Depending on the lens, maybe $20 or $30, you sent your lens to Nikon. They did the modification. And what they basically did, they replaced the aperture ring with an AI aperture ring, such as you see here. And how do you tell an AI from a non-AI? One, you will notice there is a secondary 
row of aperture numbers right near the mount. Okay, so here's the primary one. You also notice that. And you will also notice the coupling prong has some holes in it, has a couple holes in it. Here's a coupling prong on an AI lens. And here is a coupling prong, prong on a non-AI lens. Okay, you can see the difference. The reason for that is, and the reason for this secondary aperture scale, is these cameras had something called um, ADR, Aperture Direct Reading. So there's a little window in the finder. When you mount the lens, it has a little magnifier in it. That picks up that number and shows it to you in the finder. So you will see the apertures, aperture you set in the viewfinder. And the reason for those holes is to allow some light to get to that secondary aperture ring. Okay, but again, it's extremely important. Never mount a non-AI lens, a pre-AI lens, or whatever you want to call it, onto an AI camera. So what are the AI cameras? As I said, 1977, they introduced the Nikon F2. They called it a Nikon F2A when it had this meter prism. There was also a Nikon F2AS. Body was exactly the same, it's just the prism was a little different. It used LED lights rather than a needle. There was also, as I said, the Nikromat FT3, which used the AI indexing system. There was the Nikromat EL, and at that time they also introduced the Nikon FM, a more compact camera. And uh, the next year, in 1978, they introduced the Nikon FE. Now, what if you want to use a non-modified Nikon lens, so a pre-AI lens that has not been modified, on, let's say, this Nikromat FT3. Well, you can do it, but what you must do is, this is the little follower here that the ridge on an AIS lens mates with. You must get that out of the way on some cameras, and this FT3 is one of them. You just press in this little button there and you put it out of the way. And now you can mount, without any damage, an AI, a non-AI lens. Okay, I hope you could see that right there. All right, so now you, and when you do that, you must use stop-down metering, okay, because the lens is not coupled to the meter. The aperture of the lens is not coupled to the meter. So now if you want to go back and use an AI lens, you just push that little lever down. So the Nikomet FT3 had that. The Nikon EL had that. And you could always tell the camera that has it, it's silver in color, all right? And of course, the F2 with the DP11 and the DP12 had it as well. Okay, on the F2, it's a little differently. You just kind of push that follower out of the way up into the finder. Now you can mount a non-AI or, or we call it a pre-AI. You can mount that lens, do stop down mirroring. When you want to go back to an AI lens, you just bring, push that little switch over to the right uh, as you're facing the camera like this, and it drops back down and you can mount an AI or AIS lens. So again, don't be too concerned with AI or AIS lenses. Uh, for most cameras, it's not going to matter. Either one will work on one of these AI cameras. Another point to make is, so we know that the FM and the FE you could mount these older lenses if you push the follower away, okay? Either, and, and FE and the FM had a system like this. So you press in that little button and push the lever up. However, the FM2, the FE2, the FM3A, this follower cannot be moved up it is made out of plastic, just like on the Nikon 
EM. You can see here it's black. On the other cameras, it's silver. The black ones cannot be moved, so you cannot, under any circumstances, mount a non-AI lens or a pre-AI lens, however you want to call it, on those cameras. You also cannot mount it on a Nikon FA or a Nikon N2000 manual focus camera. Um, so that's very important to keep in mind. The same thing with the Nikon FG or the Nikon FG20. You cannot mount a non-AI lens on those cameras or what will happen is you will damage this follower and then you won't, then even a AI or AIS lens will now not properly mount on the camera. Now one other thing, um, Nikon introduced a line when they introduced the EM back in, uh, I believe it was 1979. They introduced another line of lenses. They introduced Series E lenses. Series E lenses are basically AIS lenses. Okay, but you notice they have the secondary row of aperture numbers, but they do not have the coupling prong. So they can be used on any AI camera, but they can only be used on the older cameras, the cameras that required a coupling prong. They can only, only be used on those cameras in stop-down metering. Okay, they will mount fine. There's no danger in mounting them, but they will require stop-down metering. Also, these newer cameras, these AI cameras, you could mount the AF lenses with no problem, and they will focus. Uh, they will not focus. They will be manual focus lenses. Now, one other thing, I spoke about non-AI and AI lenses. And I said Nikon modified the lenses. Well, not only did Nikon modify the lenses, but there were some third-party companies. There was one individual, I can't remember his first name. It was either John or Ed White. Uh, I believe he was up in New England somewhere. And he would modify the lens. How could you tell if it was modified by John or, or, or Ed White? I believe it was John. He put a little sticker here with those secondary aperture numbers. Okay, well, if you see that, then you could also see what the way they modified them, they removed some of the back of the aperture ring. I don't know if it's, you can see that. They removed the section so that this back end of the aperture ring would mate with the follower. Let's get that on here, on the camera. All right, so this is a older non-AI lens that was modified by a third party. I, again, I believe it was John White. I don't know if he's still doing that. Okay, and then one last thing, just to distinguish between AI and AIS lenses. And the reason I, I want to make this point is a lot of times if you look on eBay and you see lenses listed, it, you know, it may say it's an AI or it's an AIS lens. And sometimes they're wrong. Uh, even a non-AI. So I want to show you how to tell the difference between an AI, a non-AI, and an AIS. Okay, so first thing is let's look at the original non-AI lens. Again, one of the ways you could tell is that there are no holes in the prong or the rabbit ears, whatever you want to call them. All right, um, and the back end of the aperture ring, it's continuous. It's all at the same level. Okay, now let's look at an AI lens. This is an AI lens. It's a 105 millimeter 2.5 AI. You can see it has this, the back of the aperture ring has this ridge here. I hope you can see that. But also you'll notice it has a secondary set of aperture numbers and you will notice a couple of holes to allow light in on the coupling prong. All right, so this is a Nikon AI lens. 
Now I want to show you an AIS lens and what the difference is. A very easy way to tell. All right, I'm just going to put it side by side. This is a, uh, what is this, a 24 2.8 AIS. All right, we're going to, it has the same coupling prong, right, with the holes in it, right? But you will notice on the aperture ring, at the minimum aperture, you will see this one is in yellow, F22 is in yellow on the AI lens. On the AI S lens, it's amber color. And, and this is important, the secondary set of numbers, the minimum aperture is the same color as the primary set of numbers. It's amber in color. You will notice on this, all the secondary numbers are white. Okay, so that's probably the easiest way to tell an AI from an AIS. Why is that important? Well, you really only require AIS lenses with the Nikon FA, and it may have been one other camera if you're going to use program mode. However, generally, AIS lenses sell for more than a and then AI lenses. AI lenses came out in 77, AIS lenses in 1981. Most of them optically are the same. Uh, there's one notable ex exception. The 28 millimeter 2.8 AIS has eight elements. The 28 millimeter AI has six elements. Uh, there's also some cosmetic differences between those lenses. So this is the way you want to tell an AI from an AIS, and remember, all Series E lenses are AI, uh, excuse me, are AIS equivalent. Again, you could see it's got that amber, orange color, whatever you want to call it, at the minimum aperture, and so does the secondary number. Okay, any modified lens, any modified Nikon non-AI lens that was modified either by Nikon, where's the one done by Nikon, uh, here we go. Okay, this one was done by Mr. White on this larger lens here, the 135, and here is a 51.4 that was a non-AI AI lens. It was a non-AI lens. Nikon modified it by replacing the aperture ring. And you could see the secondary set of numbers, but you could also see that the, they are all in white, even the one at the minimum aperture, and the minimum aperture is in blue. Nikon could not, did not modify these lenses, did not modify the original non-AI lenses to be AIS. They were only modified to be AI. And again, I'll say this for the last time, uh, that really only comes into play if you have a Nikon FA camera, which was an excellent camera, by the way, it was the first camera uh, that Nikon made to have matrix metering. So did I leave anything out? I don't think so. So they, the whole idea of this was just to clarify what cameras, what manual focus Nikon cameras could take what lenses. And the most important thing to take out of this is that the newer cameras, cameras manufactured since 1977, could not take non-AI lenses unless they were modified. And if you look on eBay or anywhere else for used lenses, if it says AI'd, then it should be okay as long as it was the A as long as that was done properly. If the ring was, the aperture ring was replaced by Nikon, no problem. They're gonna work fine. Sometimes some third party people do it. They don't do a good job. Mr. White did an excellent job. Uh, you know, they don't look as nice as the ones that Nikon did, but they work fine. I know it gets a little confusing because you know, some people call the older lenses non-AI or pre-AI. They call this coupling prong here. They call it uh, rabbit ears. I mean, there's different, people use different terminology for a lot of these lenses. But the, again, the most important thing is uh, just to know what body you have, whether it's an AI or, or it's a non-AI, or it's one of the older uh, bodies, and uh, then you'll know which lenses will fit. 
Now on the screen for the last few seconds and continuing for the rest of the video will be this Excel spreadsheet I made up showing the compatibility of various cameras and lenses. And the good thing with the older cameras is they'll take just about any lens. Uh, and the only requirement, of course, is one of those lenses that needs mirror lockup. Of course, the camera must have mirror lockup. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. And if you have any questions on this, please leave a comment in the comments below. Email me your questions. I'd be happy to help. And if I didn't make all this clear, please, you know, ask me a question. I will try to clarify. So until next time, take care.